Okay, why don't we resume? Um, <clears throat> Dr. May, are you ready um, to address any further questions that might exist about uh, clinical considerations for use of mRNA COVID-19 vaccines? Yes, thank you. Uh, so, Dr. Bell, please. Thank you. Um, I just wanted to say that, um, again, to Dr. Lee's point from the previous presentation, that this um, evidence of the work that's been done about clinical considerations really does show how the system is working. The point that I wanted to uh, kind of uh, bring up is that uh, we do need to think about these as kind of interim clinical considerations. Um, while um, the instructions about uh, anaphylaxis and what needs to be available to take care of anaphylaxis um, may work well in the settings in which we're primarily vaccinating now, this uh, I think really just need to be reevaluated as we gather more information and when we move to other kinds of settings where um, the general calculus may be somewhat different. Yes, and, and we agree with that as well. Thank you. Dr. Sanchez. Thanks, Jose. I just had a question in terms of the algorithm for the, for the, um, you know, the triage of persons with the precautions and contraindications. I think some mention should be made about uh, subsequent doses because, you know, what if some of these, I mean, or if this pertains as well to subsequent doses, um, because if they've had a reaction that is not considered anaphylactic, um, what are, should they, you know, what would be considered a, an, another precaution or a contraindication to receive subsequent doses? I think some comments should be should be incorporated into the guidance um, as to what um, what should be done if if there is um, if an individual experiences some reaction and whether there should be added monitoring for a subsequent one. Thank you, Dr. Bernstein. Thank you, Dr. Romero. Um, I, I had a couple of questions. One is uh, I. I wasn't uh, familiar with how often there's anaphylaxis after polyethylene glycol associated with uh, bowel prep for colonoscopy. And I wondered if something like that would be helpful to uh, adult clinicians. Yes, thank you. So based on the literature, it, it appears to be relatively uncommon, though um, there has been speculation that um, perhaps it's under-recognized. So it's it's a little bit hard to quantify, though I think generally it's thought to be um, somewhat rare. Thank you. I also, I also uh, think it would be uh, valuable to include um, the concept about the number of uh, doses that can be obtained from a particular uh, vial uh, since there's no preservative in the COVID-19 vaccines. I, um, I know with the flu vaccine and the multi-dose uh, flu zone, uh, they're only supposed to be 10 doses removed and, and the rest is supposed to be discarded. So I think an explanation uh, around uh, squeezing out extra doses uh, would be helpful in these clinical considerations. Yeah, this is Dr. Messonnier. And again, as I think um, we answered to a question a little earlier, we, we recognize the importance of that topic and certainly agree with the um, with the framing that in this time of public health crisis, none of us would want to squander a single dose of a, um, a vaccine that's potentially life-saving. I think we're going to plan to have um, a short discussion of that issue tomorrow and um, recognize that we want to make sure that it's incorporated into this clinical guidance. Thank you. Thanks. And my third question relates to V-SAFE. I know that it's a voluntary uh, program. Uh, are uh, places where the vaccine is distributed, are they, um, there's some requirement that they should at least uh, offer it or give out information relating to VSAFE. Uh, I know a number of people uh, from a couple states that received the vaccine, but 
V-SAFE was not even mentioned. Uh, uh, so this is Dr. Messonnier again. Um, really appreciate you bringing that to our notice. Um, we would ask that if anyone has um, been vaccinated and didn't have the opportunity to join into Be Safe, you can find information on our website. And we would hope that um, those listening to us today um, it, are working to ensure that at their administration sites, the um, the information around Be Safe is being effectively given. You know, m our perception based on the number of people who are have enrolled in Be Safe is that the message is getting out to many places, but even one site that didn't have this information, you know, is something that we want to try to correct. So um, what I would say is, you know, given how complicated this has been, I want to give the large shout out to the large um, number of people and the jurisdictions who have been helping this this week it feels much longer than a week to, to get this program um, launched. I think you know, it's been um, incredibly gratifying to see how smoothly it has gone. And yet, even despite how smoothly it has gone, there have been bumps in the roads. And this is definitely um, one that you're identifying. We'll continue to work to correct it. Thank you. I agree. I think there are a lot of people that are perhaps going to be taking a wait and see uh, perspective. And so the more information that Be Safe uh, provides, the better. Ms. Bata. Thank you, Dr. Romero. Um, from the field here in Minnesota, we are hearing of difficulty getting doses of epinephrine, both bile or the, the auto injector. What, what do you know about supply related to epinephrine? Any yeah, thank you, Ms. Ms. Vata. We'll have to get back to you with some additional information on that. Okay. And, and um, some of the concern that I have also is related to some newer vaccinators and uh, their lack of consideration potentially of not having at the on hand or can't getting it and still proceeding with clinics. And uh, we may need to include some guidance about whether to hold a clinic with or without epinephrine. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other comments or questions? I'm not seeing any. Okay, very good. So um, I think we'll move on to the vote. Um, so uh, for the voting members, please uh, open your um, videos if you don't have them already. Done so, um, and have all the voting members opened their videos? That appears so. So, as a reminder. Um, we have uh, three members that um, need to recuse themselves from the vote, um, and um, uh, they are uh, Dr. Doctors Atmar, Dr. Fry, and uh, Dr. Hunter. So I will call the roll, um, and um, I will ask you to please state whether you are uh, for the interim recommendation. I'll read that before we vote. Um, and. Um, are there any questions? Okay, so um, the vote for the interim recommendation, the Moderna COVID-19 vaccine is recommended for persons 18 years of age and older in the U.S. population under the FDA's emergency use authorization. This has been uh, motioned and seconded, and so we'll begin the vote. Um, Dr. Alt. Alt, yes. Ms. Bata. Bata, yes. Dr. Bell. Bell, yes. Dr. Lee. Lee, yes. 
Ms. McNally. McNally, yes. Dr. Paling. Paling, yes. Dr. Sanchez. Sanchez, yes. Dr. Salaji. Salaji, yes. Dr. Talbot. Talbot, yes. Dr. Romero, yes. Dr. Cohn. Dr. Bernstein, yes. Oh, I'm sorry. Sorry, Dr. Bernstein. Forgive me. Dr. Bernstein, yes. Thank you. Dr. Cohn, we have um, 11 votes in favor with three recusals. The recommendation, interim recommendation passes. Uh, yes, uh, the recommendation passes um, with 11 yeses. So uh, my apologies to Dr. Bernstein. I try not to skip anybody and I managed to do it anyway. So are there any comments um, from the um, voting members um, who wish to um, make any comment as to why you voted the way you did? Uh, Dr. Uh, Ms. Bata. Um, I was very eager to put forth this nomination for a second vaccine that could be life-saving, especially in light of the fact that we are seeing an average 2,600 deaths a day. Um, this is horrendous, and uh, I hope that we can slow this down greatly, uh, despite the fact that we still have a lot to learn both about the disease and the vaccine. Thank you. Thank you. Dr. Talbot. I just, I may sound like a broken record, but I really would like to thank the CDC and FDA again. Um, this has been a momentous amount of work um, and probably very little credit given to them. And I just appreciate every moment of it because these vaccines are going to change, are going to change things. And I'm very thankful. Thank you. Thank you. Dr. Shalaji. Sorry, I was on mute. Um, yeah, I just want to emphasize that I, I voted for the vaccine because in my opinion, given this pandemic, the benefits far, far outweigh any risks. And I, I feel, and I want to emphasize that the ACIP's process has been rigorous, fair, and transparent. And I'm very impressed with the CDC's comprehensive safety monitoring system that's being rolled out. And I thought today's discussion about be safe and the rapid guidance that CDC has prepared uh, has, has just demonstrate the importance and the value of this safety monitoring system. So I'm confident that our recommendation uh, uh, is, is important and will bring the coronavirus pandemic to an end. Thank you. Thank you. Dr. Bell. Yes, thank you. Uh, I wanted to uh, echo what my colleagues have said and just say that to me, this is another step forward that um, we still have a lot to learn that um, there are likely going to be lots of bumps in the road, but that we have um, used a process which is um, science-based and fair and transparent. Our systems so far appear to be doing what they are supposed to do. Um, and um, so this rec represents progress towards ending this horrific pandemic. And I want to also thank um, all the people who have come forward to be vaccinated. And uh, I hope that our continuing sharing of information as we learn it will make people feel uh, more comfortable with um, the risk benefit uh, and uh, before them. Thank you, Dr. Lee. Uh, thanks very much. I, I wanted to um, just emphasize that I voted yes uh, for the interim recommendation under the EUA uh, because of the incredible need uh, that we have for additional vaccine doses uh, to be able to protect um, individuals and in our communities. Um, I also wanted to um, uh, 
call out that the uh, implementation considerations for this vaccine means that we can extend use into communities that have been more difficult to reach with the currently available Pfizer vaccine. Um, both are outstanding um, in terms of benefit risk balance, but I do think we're going to need additional options available in order to ensure we can uh, capture and cover as much of the population as possible. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else from the voting members wish to make a statement? Um, then I'll make a quick one. I think that a lot of what has already been said would have been encompassed by my statements. I just want to say that um, I, I want to reiterate to the public that safety has been a paramount um, focus of the ACIP, the CDC, um, the VRPAC, FDA, and the pharmaceutical um, industry. Uh, these vaccines uh, were found to be safe in clinical trials, and our safety nets now um, are identifying these unusual events. Um, and the public needs to understand, uh, and I hope they understand that this has really been uh, something that we have stressed throughout this entire process. Um, also, um, the inclusion of uh, minority groups, persons of color um, by the pharmaceutical uh, industry um, has been, uh, uh, I believe, to be um, exemplary. They've tried to, uh, monitor, to uh, mirror uh, the population bases in uh, the United States. Um, there has, uh, in my in talking with public members, uh, minority groups, there was a concern, there is a concern uh, that there would not be a sufficient number of persons of color. As a person of color, um, I do feel that uh, this has been uh, properly addressed and will be continued to be properly addressed um, as we go forward. So again, I want to thank all of you on the vote, all you voting members who have spent so much time and given time uh, on your weekends um, and uh, many days uh, this year uh, to um, come to these votes, as well as the, the liaison members who have actively contributed uh, throughout this entire process. Um, and again, thank you, CDC uh, staff um, and leaders for doing this. Um, I believe that is it. Dr. Cohen, do you have any comments? Uh, Dr. Romero, just uh, want to also uh, tell uh, both uh, you as our chair and uh, all of the uh, 14 voting ACIP members uh, that uh, CDC is incredibly grateful for uh, the amount of thought and input and expertise you've provided to all of us. Um, and uh, we look forward to uh, you all um, uh, talking to us tomorrow starting at 11 a.m. Um, and hopefully uh, you all have an hour back today, uh, but we really appreciate y'all spending this, really this entire weekend with us uh, before the holidays um, to ensure that we can get these vaccines out to the American people. So that's it. Thank you all very much. I will gavel this, uh, this day closed and we will see each other tomorrow. Thank you.